So those of you who went to Dubai, welcome back. Hope you're not too jet lagged. Last Wednesday, we covered wells and well models in class. Uh, Friday, we were in the computer lab. Uh, just coincidentally, did anyone actually try to solve their homework in CMG? So you knew if you got the right answer? Yeah, no one. Same as the other class. No, not one person did. <laughs> I guess you just all knew it was right, right? That's OK. If you know it's right, then, then there's no reason to waste time with that. OK, so. Uh, we, we sort of hand, did the hand derivations of what I'm going to talk about today briefly in class last Wednesday. And the recording, I think I posted this morning. So uh, anyway, but basically, there's two types of wells, uh, constant rate wells, in which if, if we have a constant rate well, we want to calculate the bottom hole pressure over time. And if we have a constant bottom hole pressure well, we then we want to calculate the rate over time. And of course, we need some type of correction or well model or try to do something smart with a well if we have a well in our grid block. Because again, the grid blocks are on the order of, in a real reservoir, might be on the order of tens to hundreds of meters. And you have an eight inch well in the center of it. And there's a very steep pressure gradient. The pressure is not constant in that grid block. There's a very steep gradient between where the well is and the average pressure in the grid block. And so we want to try to do something smart. And that's where well models come in. So we're, the place where we started was we used the analytic solution to the radial diffusivity equation, at least in steady state. And that gave us this equation where we had some boundary condition that there's some uh, reference pressure evaluated at some uh, reference distance away from the well bore. And then we used those guys and what we know uh, to, to basically f develop uh, a well model, and so that's where we're going with this. So we use this equation in a couple of ways. The first thing we did was we said, okay, um, you know, making the assumption that we have a producer, then then we're going to have some pressure near the well that's lower than everywhere else in the grid block, and it's going to be monotonically increasing from the well out to the grid block. So somewhere between where the well is and the edges of the grid block is some radius, which we called REQ, in which at that radius, the pressure equals the average pressure in the grid block. And the average pressure in the grid block is PL. That's the unknown we want to solve for. And so then we can build a well model. Uh, if we evaluate that at REQ, then we, can, we have PL. This is the, if it's a constant bottom hole pressure well, PWF would be the flow rate, and this would be the radius of the well. Okay. The problem is, I mean, we know the radius of the well. If it's constant bottom hole pressure well, we know PWFL, but we don't know REQ. And so we couldn't say solve for, uh, even if we could solve the equations for PL, we don't know what the flow rate is at the well. So we need some more information to solve this problem. We stick with that steady state assumption, and we do a mass balance on the grid block where it's going to have a well. And uh, in steady state, there's no accumulation, so it's basically just what comes in what's, must go out, and so you have the four flow rates. And then we further make the assumption that if delta x equals delta y, then it turns out that all of those will be equal, and therefore you can solve for the flow rate at the well in terms of the pressures at the nearby wells and the pressure in the elf grid block, which is the pressure uh, in, the, in the grid block where the well is. Uh, then if we evaluate our equation, we evaluate our equation at distance delta x away. So if we, if we start, if we have constant delta x across the grid blocks, if we take a step delta x in any direction, north, south, east, or west, we end up at the center of the next grid block, which have the pressures p1, p2, p3, p4. And so we develop four equations that look like this. Just Similar relations for P1, P2, P3, P4. In fact, not similar, identical. And so then if we plug that back into our mass balance equation that we just solved for, we get this. And we can make some uh, simplifications there. The four PLs cancel. Looking over there on the right, and ultimately we get an equation that we can solve for REQ. And so the solution to all of that turns out to be that REQ is equal to delta x e to the minus over 2, 
which is equal to 0 0.2078 delta x, or approximately 0 0.2 delta x. We always make the assumption that the well is in the center of the grid block. Right? If it's not, you can refine the grid accordingly such that eventually it will be in the center of the grid block, right? And so, uh, yeah. So, so this is the so-called Piesman correction. And really, you know, what you just, as a rule of thumb, you can just remember 0.2 times delta x, the Piesman correction. You, but that's where it comes from. Okay, so then if we, now that we have that 0.2 or 0.2078 delta x, we can plug it back into our equation, uh, uh, evaluating the, at REQ, and then we get the equation that we want. So the pressure at the well in, in, in terms of the, everything we know, right? And so then if we're solving for a rate constraint, or if we have a rate constrained well, we get something that looks like that on the right. And if we have a uh, constant bottom hole pressure well, we get something that looks like this. Right? So the flow rate, rate equals to this. And then we can use those in a mass balance equation for the grid block, like we've done before. So we have this. So this is just a 1D mass balance, like we've written before. But now you have this additional term over here for constant bottom hole pressure wells. And then if you just group terms like we've done before, Ultimately, you get a system of equations that has this structure where J is a diagonal matrix. Okay, so of course, if there's no wells, there's no J, and we get back the implicit form of the equations we've had before. Okay. If there is a J, then uh, we'll see on the next slide, in the, in the location of the well, uh, it's a di J is a diagonal matrix, and it would only be non-zero uh, on the diagonal entries associated with the grid blocks that have wells in them. And then you have an additional term that comes over here into the Q matrix as well. And so again, you might have something like this for our four grid block system with a well in the third well, you'd have something like this. A constant bottom hole pressure well in the, in the third grid block, you'd have something like this and that term over on the right. And of course, we went through all these derivations by hand. Um, we didn't do this, uh, but this is the extension to varying grid block sizes in delta x and delta y. Also, uh, anisotropic permeability. So you see there's a, a kx, ky, and delta x, delta y in those equations. And that is uh, now your REQ. And therefore, uh, other than that, uh, it's just a, a small extension. Um, we didn't talk about horizontal wells, but basically it, it's a similar idea. It's just now your horizontal wells are going to cross multi multiple grid blocks in 2D, like again, an aerial view, right? I guess even in a side view, it just there you have gravity as well. But uh, so now you're w in a horizontal well, your wells are going to cross multiple grid blocks. Uh, these are your equivalent uh, radiuses, and, and you have to use uh, the, the K, KY, KZ in this case. And so then your J entry is going to have uh, it's going to have values in every location where there's a well. Okay, so that is 